Why are you here? Why are we here? How can we become the new world? You don't do things just because you can. You do things because you should. We could then see something that is revolutionary the same way email came to snail mail, did not ask for permission, did not call the post office and say, hey, can you let me compose an email? Email came and said, I am 99.999% more efficient. And when you think about the Facebook project, 2.5 billion monthly active users, that's a meaningful uptick. So to me, I feel like the messengers are like the cavalry arriving for mass adoption. I think that's really gonna pull lots of normal people into the crypto world. We take the front lines, we create, and we execute. People got in to make money. Well, that's not what this industry is about. This industry is about you know, driving efficiency, you know, global currencies, um, but it's not a speculative currency. We want it to be a commerce-based currency. You buy it because there's a genuine need to spend it, and it solves problems. Not you buy it to buy a Lamborghini. Welcome back to Malta. The summer is here, and the winter is over. The spring is here, the winter is winter over. Winter is over. Are you certain? And by the way, the fact that it was so perfectly timed with the Game of Thrones you know, sort of season finale, you know, do you know how hard that was to orchestrate? Are you serious? The Future Is Now presents Together with Belega, Malta AI and Blockchain Summit 2019. Becoming the new world. Rebranded Malta AI and Blockchain Summit 2019 with the potential of Malta's fourth digital bill giving new incentives to AI, IoT and blockchain is here to take us into the future. Two weeks ago, the Malta Financial Services Authority approved and listed the first virtual financial assets agents, ensuring due diligence and assurances on virtual financial asset-based operations. Welcome again to the blockchain island, which I have to say is slightly different than the one you visited on the 1st of November. Futurists from all over the planet have gathered on the blockchain island, and this film will guide you through the action. I've kind of uh, hit the big point here, and that is that the world is decentralized. But what I haven't hit are all the little uh, entrepreneurial opportunities that I'm seeing out there. This man has been known since the early days of crypto, since the early days of Bitcoin, as Bitcoin Jesus. This time around, we decided to throw in artificial intelligence into the equation. So it's not the Malta Blockchain Summit, it's the Malta AI and Blockchain Summit. And we found that these two verticals are marrying each other, um, and it's a very nice honeymoon is what we're seeing today. Tone Vase. I just want to remind people not to underestimate Bitcoin. Miko Matsumura. Look at Bitcoin as an automated central banking function that controls the money supply and doesn't produce inflation based on some unfair taxation, essentially without representation. Carla Marie Vela. If gambling has a kind of dream to it, then crypto and currency has a further dream, a further enablement for many, many more people. David Wainwright and Gilberto Arredondo. Now keep in mind that the value chain of this industry is still at the very early stages. People are still trying to pick jurisdictions and business models, let alone develop the, the core technology that's going to be the foundation for the future. Tufi Saliba. You want to get to the point where you have the ability to manage the value on network layer. Yours truly, the roving crypto documentarist. 
The future is now, and it is what we make of it. And it's amazing that we are currently in a state that has so much opportunity to build this future and create something better, hopefully that even our children can experience in their lifetime. Alan Tanetti. I have a daughter, she is one year old, and uh, she already has uh, her own Bitcoin. I want her to use just Bitcoin and not fiat when she will be able to have a bank account. Anna Frankowska. We have to really focus on building amazing products, user-centric. We have to create an easy onboarding in order to actually achieve a mass adoption. And Brock Pierce. Life is like a role-playing game and a non-linear role-playing game. And the question is, why do you play the game? Because to some degree it is choose your own adventure. I choose impact. Stay tuned for the full adventure. Created by One Day Productions. Welcome to the Malta AI and Blockchain Summit 2019, the May edition. I'm Miguel Pasa Santiago. This is The Future Is Now, your roving crypto documentary. And we're here to experience the introduction of the fourth bill that is allowing for blockchain, IoT, AI to converge together for the creation of a better tomorrow. Let's go and experience this marvelous gathering. We met an influx of decentralized nomads flocking to the island as the crypto spring warmed everyone's hopes for the future of the industry. Innovators, investors, top philanthropists of the space all came to the land of the Holy Grail and the Knights of Templar. The biggest question being the crypto winter. Is it really over? It's been six months. How is the winter doing. I heard that the winter is over. Is that true? What do you think? It's a very funny thing. It's like Groundhog Day, right? Where you have the winter and then you have spring and then you have winter again and you have spring. Maybe we have like a few more days of winter in the sense of like, I'm really more of a W shape rather than a V shape, right? So the W shape is where it goes up and it goes down and then it goes up and it goes down. And I think we're probably going to see more W. Well, hey, that's a, that's a good thing because at least that means the vibration is higher. I never opine on kind of market ups, downs. There's no point. But something major happened. Cambridge Associates, not Cambridge Analytics, Cambridge Associates, a firm that almost no one has ever heard of, unless you are a GP that manages a fund. Cambridge Associates is the authority, kind of like the closest thing to the word of God, that if you are a pension, if you're an endowment, if you're a major insurance company, let's talk about the groups that manage the largest amounts of capital there is. Those groups listen to Cambridge Associates regarding their asset allocation. And if you work for one of those firms, if you don't do what Cambridge Associates says, and they're right, you get fired. They just recommended that everybody puts 30 basis points in. So obviously the smartest endowments like Yale, Harvard, and M MIT have already been investing in crypto and blockchain funds, but they're the smart money. The rest of the universities that are a little slow, that don't kind of know what they're doing to the same degree, needed the green light from Cambridge Associates for the rest of the firms to come in. It should bring in about 300 billion. I said it exactly at that time. I said the groundhogs have come early, spring is here, summer is coming and crypto went from 3,000 to 8,000 on that basis. Now, there were many contributing factors. Obviously, that whole Game of Thrones thing, we had to time that, that, yeah. <laughs> it seems the insight we got from Red and Synth during last year's Malta Summit coincides with what Brock Pierce reveals to us here. The institutionals were waiting for the right time. The blood on the streets, with crypto rock bottoming to the final support zone during last crypto winter, led to the formation of a perfect time for institutional capital to make its move. They're measuring the trust in Bitcoin, right? And But the thing that's funny is it's a cynical analysis. And the cynical analysis is, is that they don't trust Bitcoin, but the fact that it's rising means that they don't trust governments even more, right? So it's like Bitcoin isn't trustworthy, 
but neither are governments, right? So, so in a way, it's sort of, sort of a, a there may be a fear-driven aspect to it, where you're trying to find a safe harbor, right? And, and to me, when you look at the professionals, the professionals are now looking at this from the inverse perspective of the inversion of the yield curve and potentially impending global recession, right? And they're looking at maybe digital gold as maybe just one sort of sharp ratio based asset exposure, right? So they're really looking at taking a small chunk. But when you really look at the global fortunes of the world, a small chunk of that is actually a very meaningful thing to something that's only like a $140 billion asset, which is Bitcoin, right? So, you know, if you throw a few billion dollars in that way, like you can move the needle. Is this a good thing? Or are these powers that, you know, the crypto world kind of was intended to counterweight with Satoshi Bitcoin white paper, uh, uh, them coming into it, could that ruin it or validate it? I think it's just any kind of emerging technology. It's a you know, nascent currency. And it, the, the market cap you know, compared to the US dollar or the yen or the sterling is tiny. So what unfortunately happened is that you had these big whales who could manipulate the price. And that wasn't good. So there's a lot of rumors about the tether guys buying Bitcoin and using their deposits and that type of thing. So it's inevitable that that wave of institutions moved in. Do I think it's a good thing? Yes, I do. They're embracing, you know, the future, the technology. I can't tell you how many times I'm asked by my friends who are completely unfamiliar with the space. It's like, oh, is blockchain not dead? Because during the crypto winter, we see Bitcoin crashing price so much. And it's like, you know, this lack of education, lack of awareness, like what's even the difference between Bitcoin and blockchain. So in my view, this is only going to draw more positive attention to the space. The startup guys, you know, they made insane sums of money, but they didn't really deliver a use case for their currency. You know, the, their currency remains, in theory, utility token, but the platform has very little use. Most of these platforms have very little use. So I think the institutional guys, yeah, have a more you know, thought out long term plan than rather a startup who's doing a very quick ICO, needs to get his white paper out, raising the same sums of money. Whereas an institution would take a 30 year view, 10 year, 20, 30, 40 year view on how this can impact their business, how it will impact their business, and what steps they should take to come embrace it rather than ignore the technology. Paving the way for mass adoption. With so much institutional capital in the way, it is companies like Balea, operating under the VFA framework in Malta, who can bridge the gap between the two, bringing traditional investors into the crypto world while also providing a way for traditional businesses and innovative ideas to tokenize their asset and after a strong KYC and AML that goes both ways, put their company up into the realm of raising capital through the blockchain, allowing the smart contracts to do the rest. You have an investor, you have a project, and we're the regulated, and that's our pitch, regulated, layer in the middle between the two, between the, the, the project who wants to raise money, the investor who wants a safe, regulated, trusted investment. I think, you know, the last year was all about ICOs, and for me, that industry grew too quickly. People made too much money, they got a little bit greedy, and, you know, that there was losses and calamities, as we all know. The security token industry is going to be far greater, but we need to do it much slower. We need to protect the investor. We need to have quality projects. Yeah, we need to ensure this time around there's no casualties. To this end, the virtual financial asset agents will act as the buffer between the authority and the industry. BFA agents are responsible for the preliminary due diligence on the issuer or company dealing with virtual currencies and the preparation of the necessary application form. In other words, both the system auditors and VFA agents will act as the gatekeepers of the industry. A smart contract doesn't really judge you by the color of your skin or your gender or your age or anything else. It's a smart contract. It's just the rules, right? The rules are the rules and it's fair. And that's what people want. They want transparency, they want fairness, you know, and they want equality and justice as well as freedom. So I think that those are the kind of qualities that we're all kind of circulating around. And it's, in a way, the society and the world are kind of withdrawing a little bit from 
sort of a darker picture of centralized power, right? Where, where we've seen the limits of centralized power and we're thinking, we'd like some alternate systems of governance that will help us move into a more equitable age. Current blockchain global penetration is less than 0.2%. Doesn't matter what are you counting, the people, the money, the applications, the usability, and less than 0.2%. Will we get to the remaining 99.8%? That is the question. Pull out your wallet right now and send me some BTC and let's see what the fee calculation is and we'll find out right now. I will send you five. So he's sending me five dollars. So I can lower it to five cents if you like. Lower it to five cents and we'll see how sure. many days it's stuck in the memory. Set pool. custom fee, Satoshis per byte. Five Satoshis per byte? I'm not sure how many cents that will be. Seven well, let's, cents. Let's do it before the week. Seven cents. You okay seven, with seven, seven cents? to one Satoshi per byte, like all Bitcoin Cash transactions are. No one uses Bitcoin Cash. That's why it's so cheap to send it. <laughs> so that's an absolute lie and anyone can go and see the number of transactions happening on the network. Currently, most of blockchains, they rely on something called mining, which was supposed to be intended to each and every one of you to participate in the mining and that was taken away from you. But uh, it's coming back. Uh, there's a period of time where many current miners, they thought I'm the devil, trying to tell them that, hey, there's an extension threat, we're going to take it away from you, giving it back to the people. But uh, luckily, uh, they realize that there's something that they can make a lot more money by giving it to the remaining 99.8% and it's dividing between the service layer and the dependency layer. While Roger Ver and Tone Vase place a bet on which blockchain will deliver the transaction faster, we run into Tufi Saliba, a cryptographer who began his journey in 2001. He reveals exciting details about the TOTA protocol, a network protocol on the communication layer that enables anyone to build user-centric platforms for value management, such as smart contracts in a peer-to-peer -peer autonomous decentralized setting, removing any dependency on third parties such as ledgers and centralized network carriers. An intriguing proposition allowing every communication device to become the vote, the decentralized miner within the system. The protocol is gaining traction in dozens of projects that are building on top of TOTA, including Ethereum on TOTA. There's a lot of uh, friction in having a centralized entity to manage that uh, ledger. Why? Because they need to have an administrator on the ledger, they need to have uh, another administrator, a manager, an audit, an audit on the auditor, and then uh, corporate compliance, and then so on and so forth. All of that to ensure that there is no corruption, that if you have a certain thing of value that is not being removed. Let's go ahead and lower it to one Satoshi per byte. Right, get on, we've only got a few minutes. Lower it to one Satoshi per byte and I'll bet- One cent fee. There it goes. What does it say? It says transaction success? Well, it's, it's sent. It, okay. it, it needs to get confirmed. So here you go, Tone. If that gets included in a block today, I'll donate $10,000 to the charity of your choice. Woo! Same way email came to snail mail, did not ask for permission, did not call the post office, it's like, hey, can you let me compose an email? Email came and said, I am 99.999% more efficient. If you want to get to security by design to get some efficiencies, confidentiality by design, and you get the scalabilities, and you gain interoperability between other blockchains, peer-to-peer, -peer, not another layer for interoperability, then you feel like, oh my God, this is like too good to, to be true. Maybe I need to learn it. Then you feel like if you're learning it, the more you're learning it, the more you want to build on it. And that's how effective we were able to get about 17 different projects being built on TOTA without having any publicity. Whoever is listening to this probably haven't heard of TOTA. Why? Because we still have the incentive to ensure that we are monetizing on the delta between what we know and the rest of the world don't know. As opposed to putting the incentive in the middle of the layer so that we can actually always like suck the blood out of the system.
I just want to remind people not to underestimate Bitcoin. Uh, what Bitcoin did in its first two years of existence, before all of these altcoins, the way it organically evolved without a major profit motive, all of the developers that worked on the code for free, no money, uh, the early miners that were mining it, spending electricity without ever really expecting to profit from the future price of Bitcoin. You just can't replicate that going forward. It's impossible. Is it really impossible? Is there no room for blockchain innovation in the space? Zonebase has been on the path from a trader in the stock market to now the crypto world, who has been exclusively dealing with Bitcoin as his currency of choice. Recently, he's been launching a Zone Bitcoin only gathering called Unconfiscatable. Oh, and by the way, Roger Ver lost a bet. The Satoshi arrived the same day for the minimum fee, and now Tone can donate $10,000 of Roger's money to the charity of his choice. Bitcoin is doing it in a decentralized way because there is no single person, there is no single corporation, uh, there is no single entity that drives this direction. And I come to conferences like this to try and remind people uh, that they're missing the underlying layer that is truly decentralized. The internet does not have an incentive model built into it. TCP IP does not have an incentive model. Everybody can plug and play. So if you were to build on Tora or not, I don't make money. You can make money if you really want to. You can empower your people if you really want to. I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. Um, I remember calling Charlie Lee in 2013 and saying, Charlie, you need to kill Litecoin. I said, you know, these altcoins are gonna disrupt everything. This is going to completely undermine the mission of what we're doing here with Bitcoin. You know, I called Eric Voorhees, Roger, everybody. I'm like, ah, you know, I was the hardest core maximalist. But I also understand that this is an open source system and we can't control that which is going to be done. And therefore you have to accept innovation in all of its forms. I'm still kind of a Bitcoin maximalist, but I recognize that I know what I don't know. And that innovation and the future and what matters could come from left field. It could come from anywhere. And that, for, for that reason, or therefore, I want to make sure I'm aware of everything that's happening. And I want to be on the front line of innovation in all of its forms. And speaking about mass adoption, uh, uh, how close are we to going beyond the 0.2%, which is where we are now? What's that magical recipe that can sprinkle it all and make it come, come alive? It's marketing. It's pure and, pure and truly marketing. People are on Facebook, people are on WhatsApp. So reach the people and there will be mass adoption. Now whether that is the Facebook stable coin and whether that ultimately leads into other coins because every, every old coin has its kind of utility within its own ecosystem, right? You know, I come from the gambling space and one thing we are very good at is selling you dreams, selling you visions, selling you, you know, um, opportunity. And I think that, you know, if, if gambling has a kind of dream to it, then crypto and currency has a further dream, a further enablement for many, many more people. Reaching the people can come in different forms. And one thing is for sure, we all in the crypto community can contribute with our specific set of skills and expertise to pave the way for mass adoption through this ongoing cyberlution. Aside from messengers like Facebook, Telegram and WhatsApp tokenizing their platforms, there are intriguing platforms we have met here at the AIBC Summit, like Belega, who can actually tokenize any class of assets for all kinds of companies. From tech innovation companies to real estate developers looking for new ways to fund their development or even a cafe franchise going onto the blockchain. The social impact is a big part of our, of our play in that we have a number of projects um, in Africa There are infrastructure projects that they struggle to get funding. So we have a kind of a solar project which is raising um, funds to put solar panels onto roofs and he could not raise the, the money locally. We understand the language of the uh, investors. Um, we've built 
uh, fintech companies before, so we know what it's like to go from being an early stage company to a, a larger company over time, raising funds, seed at, at A and B rounds, the kind of money you need to grow the business. So if you've gone through it before and you've built these businesses over time, then you understand what uh, investors are looking for and you understand uh, the, the pain points of the, the innovative founders. Mass adoption trend seems to be emerging, with platforms that can take the crowdfunding aspect of the blockchain industry and tokenization into a more secure and regulated way to make sure the future of STOs is much more stable and less damaging to a potential investor than the past of the ICOs. Tao Dust, an equity crowdfunding platform that is pairing the investor with fast-growing startups, aiming for high yields and stable scaling for its partners on both sides, is another player from the industry that helps to attract more interest towards the blockchain space. In the traditional crowdfunding world, equity crowdfunding world, we have three specific goal limits. Geographical, so investor of account from a country can invest just in startup from their own country. We have high fees, up to 15%, and usually an investor cannot exit his investment because he has to wait for an exit that could never come. We give the chance to investors to do whatever they want, enter an investment they missed, exit an investment they made, whenever they want. Now, so would you say this is a platform for more mass adoption, perhaps? Absolutely. Think about the Kickstarter. Layout is the same, but instead of purchasing product, you purchase equities. Malta has become a jewel in the making for the world of disruptive tech. This summit is a testament that the Maltese government is ready to support and innovate together with the community. The government is also launching a set uh, of, of incentives uh, to entice the medical cannabis industry to come over. So we decided in November coming to do two shows within the same week and we're calling it the Malta Week with medical cannabis and blockchain marrying each other. There's a big demand from the blockchain industry to store medical cannabis from seed to patient on the blockchain. And also there's a lot of investors in blockchain who have been smitten in the past by ICOs. So we're telling them come to Malta for a week and we'll show you what a sound investment can look like in medical cannabis. How can we improve the women in blockchain situation? How can we get more women engaged in the space for the right reasons? That's a really, <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question, right? But uh, there are so many angles to that. Uh, overall, from the gender imbalance perspective, potentially some uh, role models, figures, better promotion, uh, maybe incubators, free passes even to encourage that. I know some people might get pissed off, but in the end, like, you just want to educate further, right? And it's the change that needs to be happening in multiple sectors, not only blockchain. The crypto world is bubbling with opportunity as the crypto winter has come to an end. The Malta AI and Blockchain Summit 2019 brought forth new avenues and new people to the industry. And understanding these people within the space and striving for success could sometimes come at a price. Because there is no such thing as a good deal with a bad person. You buy someone a coffee and you watch how they behave, right? Are they grateful? Are they like, thanks for the coffee? Or are they ignoring? Are they offering to pay? Are they not offering to pay? What's happening, right? Because why? Why does this matter, right? And, and if you're getting a cup of coffee, how do you behave? Why do these things matter? They matter, pay attention to the small things because they're clues. They're clues about how this person will behave in the future. If you're an investor, just watch people, right? Because they'll tell you who they are. They'll explain themselves to you. You just need to pay attention and figure it out. So if you figure out who they are, then you can do business with them. So navigate carefully and enjoy the fruits the industry will bear for what some call the biggest revolution of our time and its future. Think about Microsoft. Microsoft went public when its revenues were 100 million. This industry wants to go public day two. Let's not do that again. We've got one chance, let's get it right, and let's not f it up again. A little bit more focus on the actual technologies and the push towards actual evolving and, and 
building shit um, and getting shit done because right now we seem to kind of be in this stagnation where a lot of people are talking the talk but not walking the walk. There's a lot more value in putting your energy, if you're an expert, into these companies than it would be running around and saying the same stuff place after place after place. Know what your blue chip is, play around with the rest, uh, but have uh, understand why Bitcoin is not just another altcoin. If I were to have a prediction on the future, will we get to the point where we can have one Satoshi equal one US dollars? And the answer is yes. I'm Miguel Francis Santiago. Don't miss the future. The future is now. Why are you here? Why are we here? And to be conscious of the things you do and say, I'm doing this because. Always asking yourself why. You don't do things just because you can. You do things because you should. Why do you play the game? How are you measuring or scoring yourself in this game? Because to some degree it is choose your own adventure. I choose impact, positive impact. And I measure my success in this life based upon the positive impact I'm having in the world. But we are all free to choose why we play the game.